And uh, so his face has been shut up in Jesus' name. And this time that we're about to enter in, this is, this is time before the Father. And this is time that we give him praise. And I just know there's at least, at least one, if not a whole bunch more, in this place today that would love to give the Lord a shout out. Pastor Dan, he's already... Oh, you want to walk the mic? You want to give a praise to? I do. <laughs> I'll start off. Uh, I came yesterday. Uh, I was kind of not wanting to do yesterday because I like my summers. And when there, we got here at three thirty, and it didn't look very promising, and I was like, and then uh, Shannon, you said something that impressed me. She goes, "Well, we'll just celebrate with our family." And I thought, "Wow, we are celebrating with our family today." And then God opened the door and a bunch of people came. And thank you for turning that around for me yesterday. And Man, that was a great event yesterday. Mm. We had so much fun. And I, yes, I have bruises on my body from water balloons. I don't know why pastors are always picked on the most, but, but it was awesome. And thank you for putting all the work and effort into that. But thank you for being there and reminding us that we are a family. Amen. That's what I really needed to hear yesterday, and, and it was awesome. Amen. Somebody else. Oh. So something you don't know is our Sunday school lesson this week. A lot of our devotions were on. We need to come into the church praising. <laughs> and this morning I started out in Sunday school giving a testimony and praising. I'm not going to share that same testimony because it's probably the same one you're going to share later. Um, but when I was singing, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, those words, I felt like God wanted me to share today a praise of trusting in him. And so it's not, I know you were fighting back and forth, but absolutely. As soon as you started, I thought, here we go. This is another God thing. Um, the trusting in Jesus today, I am just so thankful that my mom was the first one that taught me about trusting in Jesus. And I'm so thankful that I was raised with a godly mother. And the first lesson I can remember when I look back, not only of just going to church and stuff, but prayer. Prayer was the number one thing. And it has always been my main stay through everything, whether good times or bad times. I'm so thankful that I have a God that I can go to with Amen. anything. I can praise him and thank him for how great things are, and I can come to him with my troubles and my burdens, and he's there. He's my hope. And so today, I just want to praise him. I can remember when I was in kindergarten, um, you know, my mom, she would, at, in the evenings, my sister and I would kneel at our bedside, and she used to kneel with us and teach us how to pray. And then as we got a little older, she would stand behind us and listen to us do the praying. And I can remember in kindergarten, I went to school one day when there was no school for kindergarten. And because I was, which is funny because I'm so organized now, but I was a very messy little girl and I did not get the note out of my desk to take home to tell my mom that there was no school that day. And my sister who was in third grade at the same school Kindergarten was the only class that didn't go that day. So my sister was going to school, so my mom didn't know that there was a chance that maybe I shouldn't be there. And I was very shy, very backwards, and um, I was so short I couldn't even open the school door buildings to get in. <laughs> so, so I always walked to school with my sister. She would open the door. She would go upstairs to her class. I would go down to the basement to my class. And when I walked down to the basement, I realized the door was not open to my classroom and there was no lights on. And I thought that was strange because my teacher's always in there with the lights on and sitting at her desk. And so I opened the door and I was really scared. And I sat down at my desk and I started crying. And I can picture myself sitting there still. And the first thing I did was start praying. Please, Jesus, bring the school bus with the kids. <laughs> That was my prayer. You know, not help me out of this, but please bring the school bus with the kids because I knew if the kids came, it would be okay. And obviously the school bus was not coming with the kids. 
And the more I sat there, the more I got scared, and the more I prayed, and the more I cried. And um, the only bathrooms were down right across from the kindergarten class. And as I started to try to get the nerve up to go up to try to find my sister to tell her that there was nobody in my class, I would hear a noise. And of course, it was people coming down to use the restroom. And I'd run back in the class, and I would hide. And finally, I got to the point where I, I just started. My mind was wandering, you know, in kindergarten. I thought, I'm going to spend the rest of my life here. No one's going to know I'm, go I'm gone. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just forever. And so I was huddled up under my teacher's desk, crying and praying. And all of a sudden, the lights came on. And I got real quiet because I was scared because then I was like, who's in here, you know? And um, the janitor <laughs> had come down to clean the restrooms, and she heard me crying. And so she came, and she saw me under the desk and pulled me out, took me up to the office, and they called my mom. And, um, of course, my mom felt horrible, but she didn't know because I never sent the note home. Um, but that has always stuck with me of how, okay, God didn't answer the prayer the way I wanted, which was bring the school bus with the children. But he answered the prayer in taking care of me and sending me help. And I'm so thankful that my mom taught me at a young age to pray. And so today, if there's a mom out there thinking you're not doing what, you know, good enough, you are. And um, the number one thing I can say is teach your children how important it is to pray and trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I just have to say God's timing is always perfect. As I said, well, I'm not going to get up and say anything, or I am. Then Dan stood up and almost cried over something that I didn't even know made a difference yesterday. So... Here I am just standing here saying how thankful I am to be a part of such an amazing church, one that always provides and invests in our children that are, you know, that's, for me, that's the biggest reason I came back to church was because of my kids. And uh, to be here every day with people that know your name, that love you, that love your children, that are family, like we don't even realize the blessing we have in that. So um, I'm thankful that Dan said something and God's perfect timing to get me to be able to say something because I am thankful for all of you. Amen. So. Thank you. Um, I am thankful for this morning when all of the children um, were sitting up here. Now, granted, two of those children were mine, but I'm still just impacted because I remember last Sunday in um, our Sunday school class, I requested prayer for just the, the current day and age of our young people is just it's mind-boggling and I don't know the people Andrew's age and just they take dating and they take um, sexual promiscuity so lightly and it frightens me as far as the future of my children and what that looks like and this is the generation that I know I asked for prayer last week for the grandparents and parents to start praying for for this young generation but this generation is going to make a difference. They are world changers. And I'm thankful for each one of them, including, including my own, especially on those days where it's not so fun being a parent. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I just want to encourage each one of you because they, they are the future. They are our church. Amen. They're, they're um, our leaders, as was said. And they will be able to be world changers and take this, make the shift back, the paradigm shift back to serving God and even make a difference in relationships. So all of you teenagers too, Pastor Tim and Pastor Heather, they're spot on in what they're telling you. So just um, keep walking that way. And I also want to thank, um, thank Shannon for the opportunity. I taught the um, third through sixth grader Sunday school class this morning. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I had a fun time. And I'm looking forward, I teach them next week too. Um, so thank you for that opportunity. And if you do want to get involved, we're always looking for children's church teachers. And it's really, it's truly a fun opportunity. I can second that because I do children's church too. Um, most of you know 
my brother David's been fighting cancer for about a year. And we were in Sunday school and asked for praise and prayer. And uh, his blood counts were very good. He's going back for his second chemo on Monday, second chemo of this round on Monday. And they found another tumor. My sister's surgery on Monday went well, and my brother Michael is sober still. So um, a lot of praises, a lot of praises. And Dan said something about um, my brothers and sisters in Christ praying for me and my family. And I said, I know, and I truly do. I feel it all the time, the prayers in this church that support me and my family. And I just want to say thank you because I know you're there for me. And I know that you pray often for the people in my life. And I just want to thank you. Amen. Amen. Back here, Dan. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I think most of you know me. I, um, I don't know how this is going to fit in. I hope I don't disturb nobody. I am a spiritual warrior in God, nothing that I do. Um, I intercede for the, for the church, for the pastor and his family every day. I intercede for them. I come against the enemy, and he comes against me sometimes. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say is we're all, if we stand fast against the enemy, uh, Jesus will take care of the enemy for us. Uh, it's nothing that we do. It's um, the Holy Spirit of God in us doing it for us. Amen. But when I intercede before the Lord, I do it. If the Lord leads me for someone or but anything, I, I just I pray and intercede for God's people. And this morning, um, praying over the children, um, I, you know, I speak the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus over all the kids, and I know and trust that, well, I say I trust, one time I was pulling out of my driveway 20 years ago, and God said, do you trust me? And I started to say something, and the Lord said, don't answer until you can say it from your heart. And he spent the next few years proving to me that I can trust him. Amen. So that's my testimony. Amen. Thank you, Milford. Miss Barber back here. I just want to. <laughs> I just want to praise the Lord for giving me the opportunity to come back where I belong. Amen. This is my home. This is where I need to be, and I just thank you for giving me the opportunity. Florida was great, but it wasn't home. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen. We're all glad you're back. You guys are preaching good this morning. Um, I'm just going to tag on kind of what Courtney says. Um, these teens are our hearts. For, um, Tim and I love these guys so much, and we're so proud of them. Like, you guys don't understand uh, what these teens go through every single day at school, but these teens are witnessing to their friends. They're inviting their friends to, sorry, they're inviting their friends to youth group. Even though their friends say no, they keep inviting them. I even have some of these teens saying they want to go into ministry and they want to make a difference. Um, so just keep our teens in your prayers because they are going to do some great things. Amen. Amen. It's always fun to hear. He has the mother of one of those teens. I am very thankful for Olivia to have the chance to go to NYC this next month because my prayer is that she will learn a lot while she's there 
in Phoenix, but also she has had the opportunity to see how God provides through the love offering that was taken up for Heather and her to pay the final deposit without us having to put in any more money than the I mean, one partial payment that we had to pay. And I am just so thankful for God for that and for the way he has provided Heather and Tim to lead the teens and just continue to pray for them because they do have it rough in school. So, again, that as a mother, one of the teens, I am very thankful for Tim and Heather to be here. Amen. Felt like uh, I wanted to share this last Sunday, being it was Father's Day, so thanks for the opportunity. Um, last Wednesday, a week ago, right before Father's Day, uh, my father was uh, injured on a piece of equipment, a bobcat. He got pinched, uh, his leg got pinched and it fractured his tibia. In the stress and uh, all that was involved in that, he got to urgent care and uh, thought maybe it would be a good idea to mention that he had some heaviness on his chest during that little episode. They immediately took him to the hospital. Long story short, he uh, had a uh, light heart attack. They found out his main artery out of the heart, the widow maker, was 98% blocked. They did a, a catheterization, put a stent in, and he's recovering. So I'm thankful to God for the accident. Because the doctor feels like um, had he not had that extra stress, that it would have gone on to the point where, you know, it may have been a major heart attack that took his life. So hmm. on Father's Day, we sang that song, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. The Lord didn't take away. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. 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 Praise God. Lord. Amen. Glad to see there's a lot of emotional people in church because I am. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't praise God for this. In the middle of the night, sleeping with this little one last night, he woke me up out of a nightmare that I haven't shared with anyone. I'm not going to share it, but it was a nightmare. I rarely ever have a bad dream. They're always just good. But, I mean, it was a nightmare so real. He woke me up. I was deathly frightened. So the only thing I knew to do was pray. And as I started praying, he sent me that song. It is so sweet hmm. to trust in Jesus. And I was just floored and got so emotional when it appeared on our screen this morning. Being an old-time Nazarene, I knew every word. I sang it through in my, in my head last night. And, it, you know, it put me back to sleep because he assured me that that nightmare was not going to happen. And it was going to just be okay as long as I rested in him. Amen. And um, it's such a blessing to bring grandchildren to church with me. I knew the <laughs> These two over here, they're so, um, so close to each other, and I love that. My cousins can be that close and want to come to church. This little one right here hates to miss church. And you know, God's going to use them. Mm -hmm. I pray for them constantly because I know those high schoolers, like Heather said, they battle day in and day out with not finding Christian friends at school. And I know Allie's had her first year of public school ever this past year. And it was, it was very difficult for her. Yes, she made friends, but, you know, we're still searching for some really good Christian friends. But I do believe she's working on that as well. 
Amen. So I just thank God for his abiding presence and for, for reassuring uh, parents and grandchildren, uh, parents and grandparents, that he is taking care of them. That's right. Amen. Amen. Anybody else this morning? So kind of along the lines of the church being a family, Pastor Dave is our leader, and he's not the only one that, um, I, I don't want to say keeps the peace, or he's not the only one that it's that checks on other people and does, does well-being and makes sure that everybody's okay. That's not only his and Kathy's responsibility. That's each one of our responsibility to check and make sure that um, we're okay. And I'm thankful for, um, I, I kind of think of them as undercover agents um, or secret agents because there are several people in this congregation that you guys have no idea how they reach out to other families that are hurting um, that may or may not be part of this congregation. And um, just because somebody, if you don't see somebody, um, and you know you usually sit somewhere around them, reach out to them and say, hey, just check in on you, making sure you're okay, because there are people all around that are paying attention. And um, as a family, you know, siblings check on each other. Sometimes siblings get along, sometimes we don't, but we are all um, a church family, and we're going to spend forever together in heaven, so we might as well start checking on each other and loving on each other here on earth. Amen. But thank you. I'm grateful for each one of you guys. We came to this church 10 years, almost 10 years ago this fall, and, um, you know, we love it. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? Wow, that was a good message. Well, y'all did so well. I'm just going to give you the beginning. And I'm going to give you my testimony because the Lord has really changed up my heart and my spirit today. But it all goes in the same line. And I think there was a reason that we needed to do battle together this morning. And that's exactly what we just did. This is the first example of what battle looks like. And I got to tell you, from what I'm hearing, we're serving the winning team. It's so good to be a child of God. Amen. Amen. I want to give you this scripture here. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, Verse 12, for our struggle, it is not against flesh, it's not against blood, but it is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And what we just seen here was a result of tests that people have went through, journeys that people have went through, and we see that we serve the God who is victorious in all things. Now, as the past few weeks, I've been, uh, I've been having these few messages pressed on my heart and this week I've been all I've been pretty jacked up to preach this message and when the Lord started changing things in my heart this morning basically I want to hear from my people this morning my first thought was but Lord I've been working on this for a couple of weeks now you've really pressed this into my spirit and even as I told you while I was sitting here it was I really got to preach this message and Lord if I give them the mic then I'm going to run out of time and they're going to fall asleep by point number one. And the Lord just said, trust me on this. And I think this was the most perfect way to start this little series that the Lord has really been pressing in my heart. is for us in battle to give him the praise. Because he is victorious and we are victorious through him. And we see that when we have these struggles, when we have these journeys, it is the power of God that literally sustains us. It's the power of God that literally keeps us. And Satan has been really attacking me on not preaching this today. He did not win. I'm not going to preach it. You preached it. I'll save it for next week. And I'm going to tell you, it started Friday afternoon. You know, I was, uh, I was going through the finishing part where the Lord was leading me. I get this phone call. I look down. Um... I get the look down, it's Andrew, and he's calling me. And this was Friday, 1, 2 o'clock, whatever it was. And a little bit of hyperactivity in his voice, a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of frustration in his voice. And it was, Dad, they didn't pass my car. You know, in the state of Pennsylvania, 
you've got to pass inspection, just like some other states. I know we have inspections here, but in Pennsylvania, you have that first 10 days to get that passed. Well, they did not pass it because Andrew's car is a, is a great car. It's been our car since he was just a little guy, 2005 Taurus. And uh, when he went off to college, um, his, his senior year of high school, his car engine blew, and I was getting ready to look at new vehicles for myself and get rid of the old Taurus. So that be kind of kind of became his car. And he has been so proud of that car ever since it became his. Now we just went Monday, Tuesday, whatever day it was, Tuesday, and I went ahead and I had to sign the title over to him because we'd never done that. He wanted to get plates and all that jazz. So we went over, signed it over to him, spent the day with him, enjoyed company, and um, paid all the fees and the taxes. He got his Pennsylvania plates and all that stuff. And um, they, he, we were going to go have the inspection Tuesday. He set it up for Friday because they were backed up and stuff. So he calls me Friday, and he's just nervous as all get out. You know, Dad, what am I going to do? i got to be at assembly next week. I'm only allowed to legally drive this till Thursday. And he's just, oh, i got this, and i got this, and i got he's just going on and on and on and on. And I'm like, hold on just a minute, I'm trying to digest all of this and stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, Andrew, because he's like, I'm going to need your help looking for a vehicle, because Andrew's never really done that. That's one of those learning things as a young guy out of college. Don't want to be taken advantage of. He's like, Dad, I... You know, I knew we were going to look eventually someday, but I still thought I had two more years with my Taurus. He predicted it would last two more years. 205,000 miles and a whole lot of rust. But um, what had happened in the inspection was the floorboards were completely gone. The only thing that was there was carpet. So, you know, um, carpet's not real strong, you know, in a vehicle. And uh, so the guy told him, this, this will not pass inspection. So he was out of a vehicle. And, you know, first time out of college, fresh pastor, assembly coming at the end of the week and all that. And he's in a panic. And I said, well, I'm going to be going all next weekend. Or we got assembly. We got camp meeting. So Kath and I talked. And it's like, I'm just going to have to go help him, you know. So Friday, in a hurry, I went ahead and shut down the office, went home, packed up. We coughed to Pennsylvania and um, all that, but in the meantime, as I'm shutting down, trying to get home and all that stuff, Kathy just happened to be texting her mom the whole story, and um, so within that whole time frame, um, really close together, and it's all God's timing, um, ends up talking to Kathy's mother-in-law, mother-in-law, her mom ends up talking to um, Kathy's uncle John, who called. And he just happened to be getting ready to unload a vehicle. He turns and flips cars and all that stuff. And he wanted to know, basically, if they knew of anybody that needed a vehicle. Hmm. God's timing, right? Tells about the vehicle and all this stuff. And Mary's like, and my mother-in-law's like, you know, um, Andrew's got this situation. Tells of the situation and all that stuff. So long story short... God really provided in such a good way through family. So yesterday, we had to get up early. We have to drive to the other side of Pennsylvania, where her uncle lives, and go ahead and get all that done and signed over and everything. And then when all was said and done, Andrew went his way with his new ride, went my way with that, with my ride. But God really does provide. And you know, and I was thinking, man, I was working through this. This is, you know, let me give you my mind Friday. Man, I've got this message to do. And then Saturday, you know, we really wanted to be a part of yesterday. And uh, Satan really frustrated that in us. I'm so thankful that it worked out the way that it did. But um, God has a way. God has a way. And God will always make a way. And what I love about our God, he doesn't just open doors. Amen. I believe God swings wide the door. I believe God kicks doors open for his children. I'm just so thankful for the providential hand of God. And, you know, then I wake up this morning and I'm like, I finally was able to breathe for a minute, get things right. And then the Lord started telling me that, you know, I want to hear from my people. This service today turned out exactly the way God wanted it to. Amen. So with that said, remember, no matter what we go through in our journey this week, I'm just going to give you a heads up for next week. I'm going to talk about attack. 
Each one of us, I don't care what age you are, I'm so thankful our kids got to stay in today to hear your messages. Because I think our kids need to be a part of that from time to time, amen? That kids need to see how God works in the lives of people. But just remember, as you journey this week, there's going to be a battle over you. There is going to be a battle for you. God has laid claim to you. But you are also counterclaimed by Satan. And you know, Satan will not win. You know why? Because all we have to do is just say in Jesus' name. In God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. We are victorious through Christ who saves us. Amen. So as you journey through this week and as you prepare your heart and mind for next Sunday, I just want to tell you, you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss. I'm not bragging or anything, but I'm going to be preaching good next week. I'm going to be all up in your grill next week, and I'm going to be yelling, and I might put the 17-piece suit on. I might slick my hair all down, get some black, thick, horn-rimmed glasses. No, that won't happen.